Hey everyone, Cream right here, and today I have Chris Nanko on with us. Chris, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. So can you please introduce yourself to the viewers real quick? Yeah, I'm Chris Nanko, uh, you know, uh, left winger, right winger on Forge FC uh, from Hamilton, uh, Canadian born, um, 26 years old. Uh, so yeah. Where did you grow up in, uh, in Canada? Uh, I grew up in Brampton, playing in Brampton, you know, uh, I'm sure you know there's a lot of local talent out here, um, a lot of guys representing the national team from Brampton as well. Um, so yeah, I grew up in Brampton and then did a lot of traveling around for soccer uh, as my career went on. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of talent comes out of Brampton, as you already know, uh, including yourself. So what would you say is so special about Brampton? Why do a lot of good players come out of Brampton? Yeah, I mean, I get that question a lot, but uh, I don't really know uh, why so many players are, are from here. But, um, you know, there's I mean, we grow up playing against each other, grow up playing around each other. So I guess that kind of raises the talent when you have um, so many talented individuals, you know, playing alongside each other um, throughout their years in the youth levels and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, the training out here is is great. Um, so, I, yeah, I think. Uh, you know, just the just the chemistry that you build and all that stuff coming from from a young age and growing up playing around so many talented individuals helps raise your um, your level individually and helps raise different teams levels collectively as well. Absolutely. So players that come to mind is yourself, you know, Chris Danko, uh, Io Akinole, uh, Tejan Bukanti. Is there any other? Oh, Sean Hundle, um, Adonijah Reed. Is there any other players I'm missing out of Brampton that, that are um, extremely high, extremely high level right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, you look at the national team, you have like guys like Daniel Henry, uh, Jonathan Osario, yeah. um, you know, so so guys guys like that, Atiba, Atiba Hutchinson, uh, you know, so, some some big names there, Kyle Lahren as well. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of talent at all different ages. Absolutely. I, I think hopefully soon we can have a Brampton FC in the CPL. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, definitely, definitely would be something to look forward to. So I looked, I looked a little bit into, into your background of, you know, you, you know, you went to university and then after university, I mean, first of all, you played for Sigma, then you went to university, after university, uh, you're now playing for Forge FC and the CPO. Um, but can you take us a little bit way, you know, further back in time where, you know, football, that football all began for yourself? Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, obviously grew up in Brampton, so I was playing in the, the youth leagues here. Uh, I joined uh, Bra uh, Brampton youth team. Uh, my team was called, for the 95 age group, my team was called the Brampton Battle Cats. Uh, you know, played with guys like Kyle Laren. He was on my team as well. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of other guys were on that team. Um, yeah, then I moved on from, from Brampton when I was 11 or 12 years old uh, to move to an academy called Sigma, uh, which was based out of Mississauga. Um, played with them until I went to to Syracuse, um, and they sent me all over the place, like places in England, places in Germany. Got to train with teams like Liverpool, Newcastle, uh, some German teams like Werder Bremen, Wolfsburg, um, and then also Club Bruges in Belgium. Um, and then from there, I kind of, you know, I was kind of building up. Um, uh, I was kind of making a name for myself. Uh, ended up on the youth national team, U-17s, um, you know, played in the qualifying in Jamaica with the U-17s, ended up going to the World Cup in Mexico um, and played teams like England, got to play against guys like Raheem Sterling, um, Ur uh, played against Uruguay. Uh, and then uh, from there, I went to, to Syracuse. Uh, from Syracuse, uh, I did uh, four years there in Syracuse, uh, graduated and then um, went to the draft. Uh, and ended up in Philadelphia Union, uh, where I played, where I signed my first professional contract with their second team, the Bethlehem Steel at the time. Now they're known as the Philadelphia Union too. Um, and then from there, I came to Forge. Nice. So what, what is it about Syracuse? What's so good about Syracuse, their education program, uh, you know, their football program? What's so good about Syracuse? Yeah, I mean, Syracuse, I mean... They, I think it was the year before I signed with them. 
uh, was the year that they started to to get better and make moves to become a better soccer team. Mm -hmm. um, they were playing in the Big East and then they made the jump to the ACC. Um, and uh, you know, guys like Jordan Morrell, which is a local like local Ontario guys, Jordan Morrell, Skylar Thomas, those guys were were playing there before uh, before me. And those are some of the guys I noticed because um, Syracuse loves loves their Canadian players. Um, those were some of the guys that I noticed going there before me. And then that kind of made me want to make that jump uh, because I thought like I wouldn't feel too far from home, you know, like Syracuse is only four hours away. Uh, it's a good school to go to. Um, it's a good place to get my education as well and, and play soccer. Um, so yeah, they, they pick up a lot of Canadian talents. They do well with mixing in Europeans with Canadians and, and, uh, um, the local Americans and stuff like that. So, uh, they, they're producing a lot of generation Adidas players as well. Um, and yeah, their programs, their facilities, everything is just top of the line. So, you know, they, they breed, they breed athletes over there. Absolutely. So, you know, you mentioned before that you traveled to multiple different countries through football. What country was your favorite country that you've been in that you played football and you like the culture, so on and so forth? Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, like training with teams like Liverpool and Newcastle, like those big teams, those big clubs, um, especially at the time as well. Uh, you know, guys like Steven Gerrard were there. Um, so it was it was amazing. It was an amazing feeling. Um, you know, the, the, the football over there is, is on another level. Um, but I think like, I really felt at home when I went to, uh, I would say Werder Bremen in, uh, in Germany and, you know, they, I went there on a two year, uh, I'm sorry, a two, a two week trial period. And then they ended up calling me back for another two weeks. Um, and yeah, they just made me, made me feel at home there. You know, I got to go and see what it was like to be an actual um an actual player developing in their in their youth system i went to to school with the guys experienced like their day-to-day -day, uh routines um so yeah it really felt like i was at home there you know the the, the football was on a, on another level i was developing very well um so yeah i think uh, i think that was my my most favorite place awesome and do you think you know traveling to these different countries seeing these different things playing with different players at a different level helped you in your game and where you are today yeah, it definitely, definitely helped, you know, just um, being in that environment, you know, it's like uh, somewhere where soccer comes first. Um, it's, it's just another culture over there. It's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. So uh, you learn a lot, um, especially learning from, you know, uh, the coaches that are over there um, and then the players that are over there as well. Uh, you learn a lot, um, different playing styles. Uh, you know, it's just somewhere where the game is already developed to a, a certain level that, you know, it takes years and years um, to develop here. Uh, you know, we're Canada. We are getting better at that. Um, but, you know, over there, it's, it's just already at that, that top of the line um, sort of level. So, yeah, I think I learned a lot. Um, definitely one of the biggest things I learned over there was, you know, like working on my first touch, how important the first touch can be. Um, and then like different tactics of, you know, ball movement and, and player movement as well, rather than, you know, just being an athlete and, um, and, you know, like dominating guys with your athleticism, you have to use your mind as well and, and stuff like that. So. Great points. So you mentioned that you play left wing, right? Yes. Yes. Left, left and right, but preferably left. Preferably left. And I'm assuming you're right footed too. Yes. Yes. So what tips would you share with the viewers that play left wing or right wing? Um, what are, what are things that you do right now um, playing with Forge FC that are, that's helping you perform at your peak? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you think, uh, playing on the left side as a, as a right footer, I would always be cutting in and stuff like that, uh, looking towards goal. But I think that something I've developed over the years is the ability to use my left foot. Uh, so whether it's going down the line and crossing the ball, um, you know, you, you have to be able to, to switch things up and vary things up. So, um, so you're not, um, basically so that people don't know what, which way or which, uh, like which way you're going to go to, to to attack them. Um, so yeah, I think that since I was at Sigma, um, I started using my left foot because they, they put me on the left wing, uh, and then they taught me the importance of using both feet. Um, so I think that that's what kind of, you know, made me be able to go right or go left. And I think that's very important in, in your attacking styles.
Absolutely. So when I spoke to Prince, I'm not so sure if you know Prince from Edmonton FC, you know, we, we had a laugh about this. I asked him, I said, what's going through your mind once you receive the ball and, and you turn and you got the, the, the right back and the left back, the defender, and it's just you and him. So it's one of you. What's, what's going on in your mind? Um, yeah, I mean, like those are the, those are the moments you live for as a, as a winger, as a, as a wide player, a player that likes to take people on. Um, so I think once you turn and see that you're in that uh, position, it's, it's how can you get to goal as fast as you can, you know, before the help comes. Um, because, you know, as if you're reading the back line, it's like they obviously they don't want to leave a player out on an island like that. Um, so they're trying to they're trying to help him out as soon as possible. So it's like what what's the easiest and quickest way I can beat this player and get to goal, get either get a shot off uh, or create something, you know, like so um, for me, it's basically picking up speed to to find a certain point where I can attack that player and where I can beat them. Um, and then it's whether it's, it's, it's about picking up speed until I get to that certain point, then, uh, like kind of slowing down that way I have the ability to, to change gears and pick up speed again. When, once I make my move. Right. I, I mean, besides from the system of forge, you know, before the system of forge, what, what, what kind of player are you? Are you a creative player? Are you a direct player? Let me, you know, let me do my job or before the system of forge, are you a creative player or straight direct? Let me get the job done. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, on Forge, I have the ability uh, to use my my creativity. Um, I think that the way that uh, Bobby, our head coach, he like his playing style and stuff is the attackers that we have are, are build up and everything like that. But then once you're in the final third, it's, it's basically uh, either we get uh, behind the back line or we use our creativity to, to do so. Um, so, yeah, I think I have the, um, the go ahead to, to use my creativity whether that's just using my speed or doing a couple moves and, and getting by the player. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, but I think, yeah, overall, I think I'm a pretty creative player. Awesome. So, Chris, uh, before Forge, you, you mentioned another team. Was it a pro team that you played with before Forge or, or what team was it? Yeah, so it was a pro team, uh, Philadelphia Union second team called Bethlehem Steel, which is, they played in the USL and uh, it's basically the second league in, uh, in America. Uh, in the U United States. Um, so yeah, I did two years there. Uh, that's where I signed my first pro professional contract after college. Um, and that was a great learning experience. Um, there's a lot of big name players on, on Philadelphia Union and a lot of guys that are going on to have great success in uh, in Europe and, and play for the U.S. national team. Was that USL 1 or USL uh, championship? Yeah, so back then it was, there was no um, like championship and stuff like that. So it was just straight USL. So that's, yeah, it was the USL. Got it. Um, you know, what differences are you noticing from, you know, the USL league from that time to the, to the CPL now? What are the differences that you've noticed in the league? Uh, in the USL? Yeah, US, um, like, yeah. I mean, because obviously the USL at that time was more season, is, is a little bit more seasoned than, uh, than the CPL is. The CPL yeah, is yeah. only three years old. So that's why I was asking what's, what are the differences in leagues? Obviously good things yeah. um, that you've noticed uh, playing, from in, playing in the USL versus the CPL. Yeah, I think um, in, the, in the CPL, I feel like uh, players have uh, a better chance of, of showcasing their abilities just because of the fact that, you know, we have, what is it right now, eight teams in the league. Um, so there's not as much players, there's not as much teams, but the level is still high. Um, whereas in the USL, especially when I was playing there, it's uh, before they split it up into the USL championship and the USL one is there was, I don't know, over how many 30 something teams. Um, so it's basically, you know, players, sometimes players become an, another number. Also, there's a lot of, you know, the second teams playing there where um, the second teams to MLS teams, sort of like the Philadelphia union um, where, you know, you it's hard to it's hard to get minutes because of the fact that the MLS teams that the MLS players that aren't playing uh come down and play at the USL team play with the USL teams to get their minutes and you know they they come first in that scenario uh so it's it's hard to to get minutes when you're on a a second team of an MLS team when you're coming especially when you're coming out of college and you're not either an MLS player or you're not um in their in that team's academy Got it. How, how many minutes did you even get in uh, USL when you were over there? Uh, USL, I was actually pretty lucky. I got a, I got 
uh, a pretty good uh, handful of minutes. So I, I did uh, really well over there. Um, and then it just didn't work out with signing with the first team. And then uh, I decided to make the decision to come here. Nice. I apologize for going back a little bit. But when you went to Syracuse, what did you study? Uh, I studied economics. Okay, nice. Yeah, economics is good. So did you enjoy studying economics? Was it something, you know, that you really wanted to study? Or was it just something that you'd be like, all right, let me just pick this and I'm going to focus on football? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, like like I mentioned before, guys like Skylar Thomas, Jordan Morrell were going there. So like they, uh, I asked them like what they were studying and like, uh, because we did share a lot of interest and stuff coming, especially coming from the same like neighborhoods and stuff. So uh, they, they were studying economics and then I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me take an economics class, see what it's all about. Um, and it, I, I knew like if I was going to study something, it was going to be on the business side. Um, so uh, yeah, I took economics and, you know, the first class kind of like sparked my interest. I also did a, uh, a minor economics class in my last year of high school, so I knew a little bit of about what uh, a little bit of what it was about. Um, so yeah, I I as I as I um, went through the years and did more classes and stuff like that, um, I did find like interest in uh, economics. Um, but you know, like my whole mentality was like, okay, like I'm still just studying economics and still here at school because of the fact that it's giving me a pathway to play soccer. And I knew soccer what like came first for me. So, awesome. What what tips? What advice would you give um, to, to players that are at that point? They're eighteen, just graduating high school, and you know, um, they're debating if they should go to school or not. If they should just try going pro first, or if they should also get their education at the same time, at the same time while pursuing their career. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that you know either either pathway I think is good. I have a lot of friends. Um, that have gone to college and have ended up pro like myself. I have a lot of friends that ha like haven't gone to college and they, they still went pro at, like straight out of high school or one or two years after high school. Um, and, you know, now there's that now, like back then there wasn't the CPL in, in place. So now there, there's a, a pathway for them uh, to help them go pro. Um, so, yeah, I think they just need to decide what, um, uh, which route they want to take. Um, and stay focused and, and stay committed to it. Uh, I think both both routes are are good routes to go. Um, I think uh, having a degree in your in your back pocket is something something special, and you know it's a, it's a good thing to have. Uh, God forbid you get any injuries or anything like that. Um, but you know, like you can even when you even if you go pro after high school, you can still get your education while you're while you're playing professional soccer and do online classes and stuff like that. So either way, you can still get your education or, and either way, you can still be, uh, make it to professionally. Right. So how old were you when you, when you signed your first pro contract in the USL? Uh, I think I was, what was it? 20, 22, I think. So, okay. So Chris, you're 22, you signed your first professional contract, but 22 is not, uh, you know, players usually wanted that, like, you know, 16, 18, 19, yeah. 22. Yeah. Mentally, how are you able to push through to 22 and still continue to, you know, to say to yourself, to think, you know, this is the goal. I want to become a pro. Even though it's 22, just kind of like the age of, you know, you're kind of old in the soccer industry per se. You know, how do you persevere and, and you know, create that opportunity for yourself at 22? Yeah, I mean, when you've been playing soccer your whole life, like you, I, I started playing soccer when I was three or four years old. So uh, when you've been playing soccer your whole life, you demand that you go pro, you know, you demand that from yourself. So um, whether it was going to happen at 16, I thought, I, personally, I thought it was going to happen at 16. All my peers around me thought it was going to happen at 16, especially when they see me training with teams like Liverpool. I was on the national team, like all that stuff was going on. Um, I thought, like, I didn't even, personally, I didn't even know college soccer was a thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so. I thought I was going to go pro. And then when it didn't happen uh, at that young age, um, you know, I was like, okay, what's the, what's the next route? So then, you know, my coaches and, and you know, my, I sat down with my coaches, sat down with my mom and I'm like, okay, you know, I could do the, the college thing and then I can go pro. And my mom was like, okay, you know, Chris, get an education and all that stuff. Cause you never know what can happen. Um, so yeah, like I was like, okay, this is, and I saw guys going pro cause I, 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 kind of knew the older guys and stuff like that right so i'm like okay they they're still going pro at that age i can probably do the same thing and even if 
even if you you go your first year, you can still make it pro after your first year, your second year, your third year. It doesn't matter. I ended up staying for for three and a half years and, and getting my degree. Um, but you know, I know guys that have um, that stayed for one year, made it pro after one year, got signed Generation Adidas and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's not the end of the world if you don't make it at sixteen or seventeen. There's you know there's still plenty of years you can you can still make it pro. Absolutely, and there's not one pathway. I've heard many different pathways and exactly of, of how players have won pro. So I mean, there's there's no one formula for this. Um, I know, Chris. I said 15 minutes. Do you have extra time? A little bit of extra time? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, awesome. Of course. Thank you. So, um, how did it feel when you signed your first uh, professional contract? Um, it was amazing, man. It was a dream come true. Uh, that's the, literally all I've wanted to do. Um, like I said, I thought I was going to do it at like 16, 17. So like just waiting those extra like five years, whatever it was, like that made it even more fulfilling. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a great thing. Nice. And when you signed, did you have a, an agent with you or did you have a sports lawyer? Um, when I signed, yeah, I had a representation um, from, so back then it was like, uh, Sigma, like they have a representation, but they, they wait until obviously after um, when, when guys go to the draft, because you can't, it's a conflict if you, if you are in school with a, a agent. So uh, after um, I signed representation with them and then um, it's with uh, Axia sports. And then, um, yeah, so that they represented me as, as my agent. Nice. So, you know, once you signed uh, back in this time, you're 22, what things changed around you, right? Your status yeah. changed, which means things changed around you. Did anything change around you or for you? Um, I think I think I tried uh, a lot to keep it like the same, you know, the same group of people. Um, you know, I think um, obviously uh, I was, you know, going out more enjoying myself because now I have like a little bit of money and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I try to keep the same people around me because, you know, those are the people that uh, I grew up with that I trust um, who are loyal to me and stuff. Um, and then I had a lot of like the 95 age, age group, the guys that I've been playing with, a lot of them went pro too as well. So I had a lot of guys to talk to and, you know, try to keep, uh, keep my head on my shoulders like that. So um, I don't think anything like big really changed around me. Um, you know, I think I just had the, the ability to, to do more and, you know, the power to, to influence more people. Um, you know, uh, I ended up starting, you know, my own business, which I'm sure you're aware of called kick the culture. So I had the ability to do that, influence people through that, you know, um, help out people with, with my brand and stuff like that with, with fundraisers, um, bringing awareness to like the black lives matter movement. Um, so things, things like that uh is what changed around me i, I feel like um but you know what um uh, it, when it comes to to people and stuff like that I, I think i have the same group of people around me yeah that's amazing hashtag black excellence congratulations to you on on kicked up called uh, kicked kicked up culture yeah kicked up culture kicked up culture where can the viewers um find kicked up culture uh, yeah, so we're on Instagram or on our website. It's our website's www.kickedupculture.ca. Um, kicked is spelled K I C K uh, D. Um, and then, so no E. Um, and then um, on Instagram, it's, it's at Kicked Up Culture. Awesome. I mean, then you also you cut here, you have the brand Kicked Up Culture, which is a clothing brand. And then you're also playing professionally at the highest level in Canada for Forge FC. I mean, you're doing three, three things at the same time, which, which that's that burning desire, that's that hustle. What keeps you going? Yeah, I mean, you know, just my family is what keeps me going. You know, like uh, growing up, you know, like we, we didn't have everything that, that we needed, all that stuff. So like my mom was a single, single mom uh, raising four kids. So, you know, my mom keeps me going like that. That's my number one inspiration. So everything I do really is doing, doing it for her. Uh, she put in the time to, to take me to practice. Like she, worked, she was working her job, taking me to practice, taking all of my siblings to practice because all my siblings played sports as well. Um, so she, she really, she really put it, put in the grind. And then, you know, like I'm just an example of, of what she did for me. So uh, I'm trying to put in the grind, you know, to, to pay her back.
Absolutely. We got to talk. I mean, shout out to your mom. That's amazing. I mean, I, I relate to you in, in that sense as well. But my mom, when he had uh, only only me, one. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's, that's a lot. But, you know, so the CPL finals just recently happened. I was there. Um, what did you think about the game? Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was a tough one. It was a tough one. Um, you know, we ended up obviously we ended up losing uh, one nothing uh, off a set piece goal. You know, uh, we struggled. We struggled a lot with set pieces this uh, defending set pieces this year. Um, so it's it's tough. That's where a lot of goals come in uh, uh, come into the game at any level uh, in any country. You know, what, if you look at the stats and stuff. So it was a tough one. You know, we tried to three p, uh, but it didn't happen. So um now you know we just move on and we try to try to get another one next year yeah for the last two years you guys won two in a row this would have been the third one yeah how you know what was it like once you guys um got in the change room what what was that like uh after the game yeah yeah it was uh it was like you know it was like bursting a balloon basically it was just deflating you know like um it was you know everybody i wouldn't say guys were mad like obviously like we weren't showing so that much frustration but you know guys were down like it's been such a long season for us like uh you know playing in all the competitions that we do um you know we've always we always strive to make history every year and we have been um so it's it's a long season uh, like a longer season for us than any other teams in the cpl because we played what was it like over 40 games this year um, we had games every every three days, um, so you know to end the season off the way the way it did um, and not be able to hold up a trophy uh, was pretty difficult. Um, you know, individually and collectively, um, to help you know help the team out and help guys uh, go forward. Um, so yeah, it was it, it was a tough one. For sure, I understand. Next season, you guys are going in next season. How important is it for you, Chris, to, you know, to keep your mind and your body healthy? Uh, it's definitely important. You know, that's, you know, that's your fuel. That's what, um, that's what, you know, keeps you going. That's what basically that's, that's your job, you know? So, uh, it's important to keep your mind healthy because, you know, uh, and I, I still struggle with this to, to the day, to this day, you know, like any soccer player is going to have their ups and downs. That's what a, a soccer career is all about. That's what any career is all about. There's always going to be ups and downs. Um, so, you know, it's, it's important to, in this industry, it's important to, you know, have like sort of a, a short, uh, kind of a short mentality on things, you know? Um, so, you know, if you don't play this, play this game or you don't play, or, or you don't play, um, to the best of your abilities, one game, uh, you know, you have to switch it off and, and move on to the next game because, you know, there's, like I said, there's a game every three days, every four days. Um, and if you're, you're dwelling on the past, you're not going to perform well in that next game. Right. So, um, and you know, like a season, a season's what, eight months, nine months, but you know, it's, it's over pretty quick, uh, and it goes pretty quick. So, you know, it's important to keep your mentality right, uh, and in check. Um, and then, uh, with your body as well, you know, that's, that's your fuel. That's, um, that's basically, you know, like what gets you through the games that's, and everything. So, um, it's important to take care of your body, whether it's nutrition, you know, working out, uh, recovery, especially, uh, injury prevention stuff. Um, because if you feel at your best, you're going to play at your best, right? So uh, it's important to, to take care of that stuff. For sure. And last one, what's your most memorable soccer moment that you've ever experienced in your life? Uh, oh, man. Uh, a lot of memorable moments, you know. But uh, I think I would say, you know, I, I'll name a, a, a few. So I'll name three. So my first, my first goal uh, for Bethlehem, my first professional goal, uh, for Bethlehem was a very memorable one for me because it came, uh, I think it was at their five minutes of, of playing professional soccer. I got subbed on and, and I scored on my, basically it was my first touch. Wow. Um, and yeah, so that was, that was a big one for me. Um, also going to the world cup, um, uh, also like scoring the goal to send our, our team to the world cup. I scored a goal against Trinidad. Um, and I think, was it who was playing? Uh, Akeem Garcia, you uh, you interviewed him as well too, I think. Um, and uh, so he was playing for Trinidad. I was playing for Canada, wow. and then I scored a I scored a header, which I don't do often. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I, I scored that goal to go to the to send the Canada to the World Cup, and then I played down in Mexico, so that was very memorable for me. And then obviously, you know, winning uh, my first trophy with with Forge was very memorable. 
Nice. Three, three amazing moments. Um, all right, so we're at the fun questions, Chris. It's speed questions. It's all favorites. I should switch this all up. Right. But uh, let's let's go let's go through it. Um, who's your favorite team? Real Madrid. Favorite player? Uh, Ronaldinho. Favorite cleats? Uh, uh, Vapors. Food. Favorite food? Uh, rice and peas and oxtail. Gee! Oh, <laughs> oxtail! <laughs> um, what's your favorite artist? Favorite artist? I'd say The Weeknd. Weeknd. All right. That, that was it. Uh, All right. Go. Um, where can the viewers find you on Instagram? Wise, if the player wants to come and send you a DM and ask you a question personally. Yeah, it's uh, at Chris Nanko. So C H R I S N A N C O. That's Instagram, Twitter, everything's at Chris Nanko. Absolutely. And was there anything? Did, was there anything that you wanted to add in or say? Um, no. I mean, I think uh, this is a, a great, um, you know, a little great little talk show that you're doing. Um, keep doing it. You know, I'm watching uh, the other interviews. You, you're getting some good guys on the uh, to to do the interviews as well, and um, it's great for the for the kids that are looking up to you know players like us uh, to hear our stories and um, and to to know what it takes to to make it to the professional level. Absolutely, you guys are doing it. That's why we do it for the next generation of, of soccer players growing up right now and for the future to come. So, Chris, I just want to uh, thank you uh, for joining us at One Soccer Nation's podcast today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Anytime, man. Absolutely.